Hello and welcome to Vintage Automobilia's YouTube channel. Today we're bringing you a short video on this 1968 MGB Roadster. A recent arrival here at the workshop. Those that know me know I'm quite fond of my MGs and this one came up locally. We're going to try and get it recommissioned and back on the road if we can. So sit back, enjoy, let's take a look around shall we? going to do a series of short videos on this one, five or ten minutes long each hopefully, and we'll put them together in a playlist for you so you know where to find them all. For the first video we're going to look at the MG arriving, we're going to have a look around the car under the bonnet here inside and we're going to try some of the electrics as well and see what is working or what isn't. It's been off the road for about 30 odd years. 1988 seems to be the last tax disc, so it seems like this has been off the road for a good 31-32 years. It's kept very well though, and has been dry stored. So let's take a look around under the MG's engine bay. Straight away on the left you can see an early electronic ignition spark right system that's been fitted there. We'll see if that's still working or not and remove it if we need to. The pedal box looks good as does the heater and the rest of the bulkhead appears to be rot free. The carbs are functioning properly and we'll check the dash pots for the oil content. The radiator has been drained. And this oil cooler here appears to be an aftermarket fit. We'll see if that's okay and again replace it if necessary. I think I've got a spare one in the shed. You can see down here where the hose has been removed from the bottom of the radiator to protect the engine, draining it of coolant. It's had a silver hammerite paint used on the radiator and the air intake covers there. We'll remove that. A lot of detritus down here, we'll give this a good jet wash and a clean out, but it appears solid. The only bit of rot we have found, unusually, is just under the fuse box here, if I slow it down. The rest of the inner wings, bulkhead and pedal box area appear to be pretty good. On the outside, the wings, some holes either side where mirrors have been fitted. The windscreen looks good. The rubber along the bottom can be a problem on these MGs but that looks okay. Just a little bit of rot there behind the headlight as well. Repair panels are available for those. A pretty straight car overall really. The driver's door has dropped a little bit but that can be adjusted. 
car top looks in good condition too. This has come with a car, but we'll be putting the original soft top back on, which it has still as well. The boot lid on that is a later replacement. Let's have a look inside, shall we? Pretty good and original in here. The early folding forward seats. Steering wheel's lost its horn push. And it's a little broken there, but these are readily available. You can just about see the mileage on there, 36,000. Overdrive car. Really original in here. Got the keys, let's see. Disc now and digging around in the back behind the seats I've pulled out that brake drum and we've just put that in the garage to clean it up it still has tucked down here behind the seats look at these they're amazing it still has the original Kangol clipped together seat belts with the BMC logo there look at that what an amazing thing they're not hugely practical obviously these belts compared to inertia real modern ones but they're rare now and quite sought after people do want to put these back in original cars so you've got a concourse car you want the original seat belts in it it's pretty good nick i'm not here we found it has had a 12 volt battery conversion which is really handy usually there are two little six volt batteries in the back here the uh, SU pump down there, we'll have to double check that, make sure that's working okay. Someone has added some speakers into the back here, but they're not plugged in. We'll leave them for the minute. Additional tyres here for the hood as well. They just wrap round to hold it down. That's unusual, normally missing on some of the other roasters I've had. Still got all the original um, panels. Door cards, original upholstery, this is the original seats, original carpet, sort of hessian back. You don't see these rubber sill covers often either. They're original. Rare these days. Um, you can get them now. I think they are reproducing this rubber cover. But most of the cars you'll see now just have carpet on the inner sill. And these little sill trims are obviously a sort of 80s edition really impressed with this car we found the badge for the horn push down the back of the seat as well it's not quite lined up actually just sitting in place at the minute so that's back in straight away looks better in here without a back there again when the damp gets into the hardboard on the door cards they all sort of bubble and that and they're not too bad they're original and um, we'll leave those in there just a little bit of dry moldiness on where it's been in storage for years. We'll wipe all that down, give it a good clean, feed the leather, it'll come up a treat. 
but let's see if we've got anything. Mm, nothing there. No. Okay. Oh, we have ignition light now. That's good. Oh, it's gone again. Let's try this. Oh, we've got wipers. is working. Well that should be light. And rear light. We have a side light there. Oh and a side light there. But no dip beam. Right so we've just stuck the battery charger on, linked that up there. I'm gonna put a bit of extra juice in and see if that'll be enough to turn the engine over. So we couldn't get the engine turning over today, but we're going to get a new battery soon and try again. We think there's possibly a problem with the starter motor or the solenoid, and there's no life there at all. But the engine does turn over by hand, so we know it's free. So a little bit more exploring into the electrics, and we'll bring you that in the next video. Hopefully you enjoyed the first video. Look out for the next one coming next week. Thanks for watching. Goodbye and stay safe.